Hi there, King Baza here, and yeah, today is quite a touching one because today is 9/11, and um, so our motivational mankind today and our blog is all about a fantastic human being called Rick Rescola. Now, basically, what happened to us, or how his life went, was Rick was actually an Englishman, born in Hale in Cornwall, uh, and that was in 1939. And uh, so. What happened was, when he was young, there were just American troops based all around the area because it was about 1939, Second World War. And he fell in love with the idea of the American soldiers and how they were going on, etc., etc. And so he was a natural sportsman, set all sorts of school records. He was an avid boxer. And then one day, a professional boxing match was scheduled between a British boxer and an American heavyweight a contender named Tammy Murello. Now, all his friends backed the British guy. But Rescola stated, I'm for Tammy. Yeah, and Morello won the fight. And everyone in Hale thereafter knew him, i.e. Rescola, as Tammy. And until the day he died, they just referred to him as Tammy. So he left uh, Hale in 1956 to join the British Army. He enlisted in the British Army in 57 and trained as a paratrooper. Then he was sent over to Cyprus during the Cypriot insurgency wars, 1957 to 60. He then served as a paramilitary police inspector in northern Rhodesia. And all the experiences there made him a really rabid anti-communist. And it was during this posting, if you like, that he met and forged a life-altering friendship with an American soldier called Daniel J. Hill, who inspired Rescola to join the US Army and fight in Vietnam in order to fight the, the communists. So he was thinking about this. He went back to London after Rhodesia, and he joined the Metropolitan Police Service. But very soon, he just couldn't handle it. He moved to the United States. He lived at a YMC uh, hostel in Brooklyn, New York until he was able to enlist in the army. And then everyone in the army knew him as Rick Rescola. And he enlisted in the U United States Army in 1963. And after basic training at Fort Dix, he went to officer candidate school and went to airborne training at Fort Benning. Once he graduated, he became a platoon leader in 2nd Battalion, 7th Cavalry Regiment, Regiment 1st Cavalry Division Air Mobile. So he was sent to Vietnam. He served under Lieutenant General Hal Moore, and the two of them took part in 1965 in the Battle of La Drang. Now, there's a film made by Mel Gibson, and it's called We Were Soldiers, if you ever want to watch it. And I'll play the theme music, because it's quite stirring below. Now, people say, and I don't know whether it's truth or not, that Mel Gibson has an avid hatred of the English. That's why he did Braveheart, and when he did We Were Soldiers, Rescola's part was pay, played by an American because Mel Gibson wouldn't have it played by an Englishman. Now, in the book, Rescola is the actual soldier pictured on the book cover. And he wrote the book along with General Hal Moore. And General Hal Moore described him as the best platoon leader I have ever seen. Yeah. Now, Rescola's men nicknamed him Hardcore for his bravery in battle. And they loved him for his good humor and his compassion towards the men. But something that was really, really strange about him, the Cornish Hawk, as he was known, despite his toughness, what he would do during the Battle of La Drang is sing to the men to calm them. And he would later use that in 9-11. So he got out of La Drang in one piece. Not everyone did. And he got all sorts of stars, Bronze Star, Purple Heart, Vietnamese Cross for Gallantry, etc. Now, after service in Vietnam, having survived that, back to the US again, and he started learning about security. And so he started uh, leaving all his higher paid jobs because he wanted to be in security again. So he got a job with Dean Witter Reynolds at their offices in the World Trade Center in New York City, 1985. He knew that looking at the World Trade Center, uh, bombing of 1993, that um, various areas were just open all the time to um, uh, attacks by um, 
insurgents or whatever you would like to call them. And he started working uh, with Dean Witter and Morgan Stanley in 19 because they merged in 1997. And he wrote a report about both the towers saying that they were totally open to attack by uh, terrorists. Yeah, He put through reports on this, but they were all um, totally ignored. So uh, what happens, we all know that both towers were struck by aeroplanes. And this is exactly the, um, the fear that Rick Rescola had had. had. So at 8.46 a.m. on the morning of September the 11th, 2001, American Airlines Flight 11 struck World Trade Center 1. Riscola heard the explosion and saw the tower burning from his office window. The announcement came from the Port Authority saying, stay at your desk. Rick Riscola, however, just ignored it. He got up, grabbed himself one of those bullhorn microphone things, and started striding up and down the offices, systematically ordering all the Morgan uh, Stanley employees to evacuate by the um, emergency exits down the stairs. He got out a thousand people. He also directed people down a stairwell from the 44th floor, continuing to calm employees after the building was just rocking from side to side. And how he did it was singing to them, um, like he had in Vietnam. He even got another 250 guys out who were just visiting the offices for stockbroker training classes. And they all knew what they had to do because of this big burly guy shouting at them through a bullhorn, telling them what to do. So what he did was he was singing songs that he'd sung in Vietnamese, Cornish songs from his youth. And all the people calmed down and just went down and he got thousands of people down the stairs. He called his wife, telling her, stop crying. I have to get these people out safely. If something should happen to me, I want you to know I've been happy. I've never been happier than I've been with you. You've made my life. He got out most of Morgan Stanley's 2,687 employees. He went back into the building. He was told, as he just started going up the stairways, get out. Just get out, the whole thing's going to go. And Riscola replied, as soon as I make everyone, make sure everyone else is out. He was last seen on the 10th floor, heading upwards very shortly before the tower collapsed. Unfortunately, his remains have never been found. He is our motivational mankind. Number 14, Rick Riscola.